It's time to dream again. Can you believe that? Mr. Toastmaster, who just left, fellow members and guests, my name's Austin Haynes. I'm excited to speak with you tonight. So I want you to imagine this, a visualization of a young boy crouched down in a dimly lit room while on the other side of the wall, his parents battled their way into divorce. And in that moment, that young boy didn't feel good enough. And in that moment, an achiever was born in that little boy as he rode the divorce into poverty. But more importantly, or more drastically, I should say, that the dreamer in that boy was completely locked up, handcuffed. So that little boy was me. We'll let the elephant in the room. And when my parents got divorced, I didn't feel good enough. I felt like something was wrong. And you know what's interesting? Have you ever made a key decision in your life where you made a decision, I think I was about a five-year-old boy, and you make a key decision at five, but you don't recognize it till later? This happens a lot, believe it or not. So I didn't feel good enough, so guess what? A cheater was born, and I was gonna prove how good I was. So I got into sports. Anybody ever heard of soccer? Mm -hmm. Right, the World Cup's going on right now. So I got into soccer. I got into basketball. And I started to do really well. And I loved it. And I was like practicing all the time. But you know what happened? Just when I started to get good, it was like I ran into the ceiling. And there was a voice in the back of my head. I said, hold it, put the brakes on, you're not that good. Anybody have a voice like that? Why don't we grab that voice and just get rid of it, right? But I didn't get rid of it because I didn't know what it was. So I kept going on with this voice in my head, wondering why it would have kept holding me back. So I mentioned to you earlier, poverty. Has anybody ever been impoverished before? Wow, doesn't feel good, does it? You know, I was in poverty because we were on food stamps. Anybody ever see food stamps? It's like funny money, right? It almost looks like monopoly money. It's like a joke, right? But I knew something wasn't right, even though I had everything, so no complaints here. This isn't a pity party. But I knew something wasn't right. But the culmination of that happened when I went to the store. I was sent to the store to buy milk and <coughs> feminine, <coughs> feminine products. Is there any husbands in the room? Have you ever gone to the store to buy your wife Tampons? Look, they're, look, they're, okay, a brave guy. You're, you're too embarrassed to even mention it, right? So it's embarrassing, right? So I go to the store, and I'm like, I'm going to get this thing in the bag, and I'm out of here, right? Guess what happened? My friend just happened to be in the store. So I'm buying feminine products with food stamps, and another key decision. I never want to feel like this ever again. Again, it wasn't like I lacked, but you just recognize things growing up as a kid. You're more impressionable. So I knew that I wanted more. Good news. I got a shoe shine kit. Have you ever seen those old-fashioned shoe shine kits? I got one. I didn't know what it was at first, but I was like, this is cool. I'm going to grab this thing. And fortunately, I lived in a town where there was more bars per square mile than any other town. I think they were in the Guinness Book of World Records. Great, right? So now I get to go into the bar with a shoe shine kit as a young boy. So I go in the, go in the bar. And then, first of all, the bartender's like, hey, get that kid out of here, because he sees this young boy walking in. So I'd go, I'd hold up the shoe shine kit, and guess what? The bartender would go, oh, come on in. So I would go around the bar, and I'd grab my, my cloth, and I'd say, I'd shine up the shoes, work real hard, you know? No idea what I'm getting paid for, didn't care. Shining the shoes up, working real hard, making sure that things are spit shine, they look great. And then the guy would say, what do I owe you? And I'd say, whatever you want to give me, sir. He could me a dollar, I didn't care. You know what, I was making money. And it felt good, it felt good. So you know what I did? I took that industriousness into my adulthood. And guess what, I still wanted to prove myself. So guess what I did? I got into sales, right? What a great field to get into if you wanna prove yourself. Because guess what? They want you to prove yourself every day, every month, every quarter, every year. What have you done for me lately? Great. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to prove myself. I'm going to show them I'm good, right? So guess what? That happened. I became successful. And I made money. 
Anybody ever break, have a breakthrough where you make money? Feels good, right? But you know what? I still felt unfulfilled. Why did I feel unfulfilled when I had success? Do you remember when I started this story and there was a dreamer that got locked up? Well, that dreamer, despite the success, was still locked up by those self-limiting beliefs and that little voice that kept talking. And it's funny, I just got a message from a woman today. You know what she said? I always believed in you more than you did in yourself. Just today, I said, wow. It just was a confirmation that that is so true. So I stand before you today as somebody who's gone on a journey of personal growth and created a program and a system where I stand before you and tell you that I can believe that I can truly be, do, have, give, feel, or experience what I truly want. The question is, do you believe that for yourself? I challenge you with that question, and I compel you to grab a hold of it. So I'm going to leave you with two things. One, it's never too early or too late for you to set that dreamer free because that dreamer is dying to get free. And the time is now to dream again. Thank you.